Hi everyone, my name is Stacy, and I wanted to share with you a short story that I wrote a few years ago that recollects one brief moment in time of the eight-year-old version of myself trying to manage McCardles. The year was 1977. And as I previously mentioned, I was eight years old, long time ago. As I sat enjoying a super cheesy grilled cheese sandwich, personal favorite, I might add, my mom reminds me that my piano lesson is, just, is in just less than a half an hour. I finish off the last morsel of my sandwich and begin to feel that familiar sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach. I think all of you might know what that feels like. I gather up my music books, being sure not to leave one behind, and carefully slip $5 into the back pocket of my new Jordache jeans to pay for the lesson. I take a deep breath and remind myself that Mrs. C's house is only three blocks away, three short blocks away. And by the way, I'm also thinking all of my friends, you know, can do this without even thinking twice. Like, why is this such a problem? But anyway. So in one swift-footed maneuver, I lace up my running shoes, grab my belongings, and trot off across the front lawn toward the street. I could feel a subtle spring in my step that day, and I was certain that today would be the day for victory. I pass by our neighbor's house, Mr. and Mrs. J, and I approach the intersection of the first block. So far, so good. Wait, what was that? Right. The first needling thought of wonder. It was already on my mind. When would it happen? As I rounded the corner halfway into the second block, my anticipation turns to reality just as predictable as my Thursday afternoon piano lesson. I tried to deny it at first. Not today, I thought. I was not going to let this happen today. I kept chanting to myself under my breath, I am fine. I kept walking, one foot in front of the other, slow and steady. But with each step, my heart began to beat faster, even though I tried to ignore it. I couldn't. Within a few minutes, my legs were heavier than lead weights, and my beating heart was all that I could hear. I'd almost reached the corner, ent entering into the third and final block, when I realized I just couldn't take another step. I knew the drill. I had to stop. So there I was, standing on the side of the road. I was alone and as good as late for my lesson. My thoughts immediately turned to all of the potential eyes, all of my neighbors looking outside of their windows at this kid standing in the middle of the road doing absolutely nothing and thinking, why is she just standing there? So my mind jumps into action faster than I could recite the Brownie Pledge, searching for an excuse, any excuse, just in case somebody asked me why I was standing there. I dig deep into my pockets, searching for the money my mom gave me to pay for the lesson. A perfect reason to stop, I thought. Why would I continue on my journey if I didn't have money? But just as quickly as my search began, it ended. I, of course, found the $5 bill neatly folded in my back pocket right where I put it. I have another idea. My shoe feels loose. My right shoe feels loose. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's been loose since I left home. I better stoop down and retie it. And there goes another 20 seconds, successfully compensated for. I stood up and decided to forge ahead the entire distance of four houses. I was stressed about walking four houses to get to my piano teacher's house and her one-of-a-kind pink upright grand piano. Well, I only managed to make it another 15 steps and I knew I had to stop again. This time though, I was feeling a little bit more at ease because I'd already figured out what my excuse was. I stopped abruptly, thankful for the break, and I gingerly unzipped my music bag. 
I methodically leaf through each of my books to make sure I haven't left one behind. Nope, they're all there, but of course I already knew that. As I enter through Mrs. C's front door, I'm happy to hear that the overly exuberant kid before me is still perfecting his rendition of Waltz in A minor. I can now rest for a few minutes, both physically and mentally. Many years later, I came to learn that my premature exertional fatigue, stiffening leg muscles and accelerated heart rate were a result of my body's inability to convert glycogen to glucose as a source of energy for my hard working muscles. And by the way, this was about 30 years later. I think I was 37 or 38 when I was diagnosed. My doctors called it McCardle disease or glycogen disease type five. As you can imagine, I have assembled a plethora of just-in-case excuses over the years. They range from tying my shoelaces, which was a big favorite as a kid, to checking my cell phone for a highly anticipated text message. I've also been known to stop dead in my tracks to admire at length the most god-awful whatchamacallit you have ever seen in a store window. Then one day it dawned on me, it was time for me to embrace my body and all of its inborn limitations. So now, when you see me standing on the side of the road, taking a break, be rest assured I'm no longer desperately searching for a makeshift explanation, but rather making the most of what life has to offer and pausing to enjoy a moment. Now, that being said, there are still times when I am with other people and I need to stop and rest, I tend to be overly apologetic. Uh, you'll find me saying, I'm really sorry. I just need to rest. Just wait a minute. I'm, I'm really sorry. I know. And I'm not sure that will escape that feeling entirely. But I think what's really important is that we need to learn to accept what we can and we cannot do and that it's okay for us to take a little bit of extra time to either slow down or to stop and rest because we'd rather everybody be able to continue to be active in a safe manner rather than pushing through and risk injuring our muscles. Hope you all have a great day.